Hi, everyone. What's up? How's it going? Good to see you again. Okay. So we're, li we're live now. We have all these faces on us. We are live. But Amazing. So, hey, everyone out there for reviewing in on this session. We are really thrilled to, to have three amazing guys with you today. Um, this session will be recorded and made public afterwards on our website. Um, my name is Christina and I'm Senior Program Manager here at Global Fashion Agenda live from Copenhagen. And I'm very excited to kick off this case study on the designer challenge with Heron Preston and team. Um, as part of uh, what we have been doing here, we have Design Studio where we together with three creative directors have identified a challenge within designing um, sustainably. Um, and yesterday we broadcasted the CFS Originals format, the Designer Challenge with Heron, who showcased how to create a 100% 3D printed sneaker. Um, and with me today, is I have the three stars. So we have Heron Preston, founder, creative director, who said yes to identify the challenge with us. And we have Daniel Bailey, product designer and founder for Concept Kicks who helped design the sneaker. And also we have Cornelia Smith, who is representing the Sellafield team um, and the CEO and co-founder of Sellafield, who's the creator behind the 3D printer. So amazing guys, I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, I just wanna say, I've watched, I've watched the designer tone several times with you. And I think it's, first of all, it's really, really good and it's really funny. And I really wanna hear Heron, so, why did you say yes to this challenge to begin with? And why a 3D printed shoe? Um, I said yes to participating in this project because of the platform and the stage that you guys have built. Uh, the Fashion Summit is a very prestigious um, program that I've always heard about and you know I've always wanted to be a part of. So, you know, when the invitation came, I was all about it. And, you know, sustainability has been a part of my journey. Um, I really kind of kicked this off with the Department of Sanitation collaboration in 2016. And ever since then, I've just been kind of letting my kind of curiosities and my interest in sustainability kind of guide me. And I've landed here for sneakers and 3D printed sneakers. I mean, I grew up a sneakerhead. I used to work at Nike. Um, <laughs> you know, like I love sneakers so much and, um, you know, I used to be a big collector. So that's just been a part of my own personal, like history and my own, you know, my own interest. Um, and then when it comes to, you know, sustainability, I am just learn. I just, you know, I've been learning that, you know, when you recycle stuff, it's, it's easier to recycle something that's one material versus multiple materials and, you know. Sneakers are really made, a lot of sneakers can be made in multiple materials. And also when you look at toxins and chemicals, which also make it harder to, to recycle, you learn that sneakers are, you know, kind of gl use glues sometimes, you know, to glue pieces mm -hmm. together. And so also multiple materials. When I learned about Cornelius and Zellerfeld and his process of having one material and no glue and a recyclable material made from, you know, recyclable bot recyclable plastic bottles, you know, this was all very interesting to me. And also I discovered that, you know, 3D printing hadn't really hit so much, it had almost hit a wall where it, things were still very kind of hard, mm -hmm. like a rock. And, you know, Cornelius figured out how to make, you know, flexible uppers and flexible shoes um, where you can literally have an idea and print it and wear it within a couple of hours instead of having to wait for production around the world and shipping Right, so shipping and CO two emissions and all of this stuff that is so toxic and damaging up to the to the environment, you know, Cornelius has really kind of developed something to really kind of, you know, help change change all of that process. So when I discovered, you know, him in Zellerfeld, I was like, man. And then we were like, all right, we need to work with like a designer. And then Daniel came into the mix, and so that's kind of how it all happened and why I wanted yeah. to, you know, uh, participate in this in this challenge. Thanks. And I, I, I love the way you also talk about Cornelius and Sellerfield and Daniel, for that matter, in the designer challenge from calling uh, Cornel Cornelius the next Einstein. <laughs> it's just a good vibe. Um, Daniel, what you have been making a lot of, of sneakers and you're a bit of a sneakerhead as well. How has the process been different from a design perspective 
with a 3D printed sneaker compared to traditional manufacturing of footwear? It's definitely been different. I mean, um, I think, you know, there's always challenges when it comes to turning something 2D into 3D, whether mm. it's from a 3D printing or just, you know, even more traditional construction methods. But I think, you know, it's been um, less of a linear process. It's been a lot more like kind of learning about what, you know, uh, you know, Zellerfeld has got um, and, and what the capabilities of their printer is. Um, and so it's been kind of, you know, a lot of learning from, from, from all of our sides, I think, of just, you know, um, what the possibilities are, because it's, it's kind of new to all of us, you know. Um, so it's been a very, you know, explorative process. And I think we just kind of came to a place where we were just like, you know, this, the prints that are coming out with like the fact that you can control multiple densities in a single print and like the, the texture finish on the 3D print is that's quite frankly something I've, I've I've never seen before so it's kind of like you know let's let's work with with what the the printer is 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 already you know kind of putting out and just just try to just um showcase what the printer does so beautifully so it's been it's definitely been a learning experience for me for sure yeah all right so Cornelius aka Einstein how uh, <laughs> tell us more about that printer so you, you, you have told me, you know, that you started four years ago building a 3D printer in your student dorm. Do you, can you give us a, just a brief explanation on why did you start with 3D printing and how it's, again, how it's different from traditional manufacturing? Now, Daniel touched a bit upon it. Yes, sure. Um, you, you know, I love, I love in the internet and software industry, actually, a lot. <laughs> um, so... I, I mean, the fact that we that we can sit here right now and talk to uh, talk to thousands of people is super fascinating, and especially so um, when we think of the fact that it was unimaginable 30 years ago. And when we ask ourselves, really, how 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 did we get here? It's very obvious that it's because um, those barriers to to contribute are very very low. Um, and when we so so for yeah so for example when you're when you're a, a poor kid somewhere in the middle of nowhere you, you just literally need a computer and an internet connection and you can you can contribute you, you can have an idea in the morning throughout the day you can code the solution and in the evening at almost no distribution costs you can distribute your solution to billions of, of people and um, however what i really don't like is as a young engineer um, that's not the way it is for stuff that you can feel, that you can touch, like for physical products. It's much harder. You need, in order to test an idea, of course, you can build a prototype, in order, but in order to test it, the market feedback, you often need many people, you need tools, you need machinery. So it's very, very hard and super, super high barriers to contribute. And um, especially, and, and this is super frustrating, and especially frustrating in the footwear industry, um, where, where you, you see, for example, especially with Daniel's um, Instagram page, Concept Kicks, where you see so many passionate designers, so many designers who, who put all their love, all their heart into, into making beautiful sketches, but there's no way for them really to, to wear them or to produce them. And um, this is something that, that I'm super frustrated about as a consumer, because I would love to have those shoes. Um, so, so this is when I said as a student, especially when Daniel posts every day, so every day I was seeing those pictures. So this is when I said, I, I, I can't stand it anymore. I have to do something about it. Um, so, so this is when I said, okay, I, I really tried to build a machine that just with a push of a button can produce any type of, any type of shoe, maybe a sneaker, flip-flop or high heel, whatever. And, um, and, and over time I met extraordinary people people that are much, much better in engineering, in design, in, in everything, much better than me. And together we have now built those monoliths, the, those printers that can actually do this and that can actually lower those barriers to entry down to almost zero. And what, what I love about it is that now it's the first time in history that actually footwear becomes much more like software. So as a footwear designer, you can now have the idea in your in, in your head in the morning, throughout the day, you can 3D model it. And in the evening, you can send us the file. And like three days later, you can have it in your mailbox. And I believe that is, or we believe, that is how footwear should should be. Because um, now, 
since the barriers to uh, yeah since the barriers are so low and the upfront investments are literally almost zero um it's we, we don't care if it's just for this footwear designer, if it's just one pair that he needs in order to excite his, excite his Instagram follower base, or if it's a thousand pairs, the, the technology enables us to not care. And, and this is great because this way designers can experiment, new designs can come up, like what, what Heron said, said before, um, like the, you, you, see, you see Jordans and, and, and all of that all the time, but um, it's it's really about um, also like getting new ideas in, in, into into the world and and this is what what we love about this and especially what what Heron said like the circular economy approach um, the recyclability the the fact that you don't have to send shoes over the ocean but just the three D file um, and then print it on demand where the demand is um, I, we believe this is like a very compelling alternative and this is why we are so excited. Thanks. I, I think, uh, you know, it, it's so amazing to hear how passionate you are about that. And, you know, the, the vision of it being, you know, it is a circular project in the end. And it's also with this project, the aim is that everyone, if they had a 3D printed shoe, you know, when that shoe was even worn out or you didn't want to have it any longer, you could then send it back and then break down the fibers and make a new shoe. But it's, is this a technology that is scalable in the long end or how do you see that? It's super hard to scale, yeah. uh, it's, it's especially since often like, so, so there's no 3D printer that, that, can, that can print shoes for the first, for the first, uh, yeah, yeah, for the first to token, let's say, um, but it's also, um, Yes, yeah, so, so there's no real solution, especially when it comes to like producing thousands of pairs or thousands of products in the end, because then, then many things change. It's not like this desktop printer that you have in your um, engineering lab. It's, it's much more like a production setting where, where many things are different to traditional production because a shoe, for example, takes, let's say, 24 hours or even longer. Um, mm. So 100% challenges that haven't been addressed before so much. So it's really like new ground and, but, but, but yeah, we, we are very excited to take on those challenges as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also just wanted to, to mention to all the guys listening in outside and viewing this, that uh, we have a Q and A in the end. So if you have any questions for, for Heron and team, please just uh, shoot in questions. Um, but, but Heron, what, um, so we are talking a bit about, you know, previously you have also done other projects within sustainability and that is, also something you really care about. What would you, if you were an upcoming and emerging designer, what part of the supply chain would you recommend another designer to start imp implementing sustainability in now when you have created a product that is so circular yourself? So <clears throat> I think, so I think there's, there's two, I guess, um, well, there's, there's an end and there's a beginning where I would kind of suggest starting. The beginning being at the very kind of beginning of a um, life cycle of a product, which is literally, I mean, we can, we can start at the farm if you're talking about a cotton t-shirt where cotton is grown and talking about, you know, regenerative cotton and looking at the soil as being as healthy as possible to grow like the best plants. So you can start there at the very beginning of like a material and looking at organic materials and recycle and like organic materials right but then you look at the end of a life of a product it may have broken down or you no longer want it you can recycle that material as well you can upcycle for example so that so upcycling is also something that i did um, when i mentioned the department of sanitation collaboration back in 2016 with kick which kicked off my journey i got a bunch of old uniforms from sanitation workers all around new york city garbage bags of donations I took them and I cleaned them up. I washed them, I made them smell good again. And then I started to deconstruct them and reconstruct them into new pieces. And that was this whole entire collection that I designed um, and sold back to the community, right? So I extended the life of something that may have been dirty or, or had holes in it, um, or was just perfectly great, you know, but just had been worn over time. So you can recover things at the end of life and give it a whole new life, right? So that's recovering things that might make it to a landfill that might be wasted, right? We hate wasting stuff. 
or the very beginning of the life, right? Like looking at materials because materials can be so wasteful. Um, when it looks at like the production of a piece, you know, dying of, you know, using chemicals, right? If you look at like denim, for example, all the, all the dying and all the chemicals and all the water usage, right? So there's water savings that you can achieve as well at the very beginning of a life of a product. So looking at water savings and removing and designing out chemicals and toxins and looking at, again, organic materials and, you know, so the beginning of the life is where you can make a really big impact and also the end of life. So as a young designer, I would recommend, you know, kind of paying attention to, um, you know, both of those kind of like stages um, and, and product to kind of kick off your own personal journey. Yeah. Did you, did you yourself have any hesitations? Or of course, we have hesitations about everything in life, I guess. But, but did you have any hesitations, you know, before, you know, taking the leap, doing something or doing this project as you talked about? What no, I, I, did you have? No, it wasn't really any hesitation. It was just like, how do I do this? What, where do I start? Um, it was a lot of questions, right? I was already very curious and I was already interested and I had already personally challenged myself to be better, to do better, to do something that was felt so new and unexpected and unpredictable. And right. So that was like a partnership with a sanitation department with waste management agency that has no business in fashion. We've <laughs> never heard, we've never heard about, you know, sanitation workers or waste management in fashion. Right. But I found parallels because those same dudes and those same women who are out in the streets collecting our trash, they have workwear. They're wearing workwear. I love workwear. They've got the sickest boots, right? They wearing, <laughs> they're wearing like really cool work pants and work jackets. And I was like, man, like that would be sick if we could do a collaboration and you guys are wearing my uniforms of fashion designers uniforms when you're on the back hanging off of a truck driving through New York City. Like that looked fresh to me. That was streetwear to me. That is streetwear to me. So I saw these parallels. And so I was already really interested with cracking that code. So there were no hesitations. It was just like, man, I want to figure out how to make this work and how to make this as, as significant and meaningful to New York City and to the fashion industry and also to waste management as much as possible. And, and ever since then, like that was, that's been my journey is just being super interested and curious on how to continue to push the possibilities in fashion. Yeah. And I think that's both what we try to do with the summit, but also what we try to do with building this design challenge with you guys, you know, because it is a challenge to design within, within um, sustainability, especially because as a creative director, I, I assume that you, you know, aesthetic is almost first priority in a way, but sustainability should also be first priority and how to merge these two. And if you hear about a 3D printer, you wouldn't necessarily think that that could end up being a really cool sneaker that you would like to wear. Um, but Cornelius, do you, could you maybe just, what sustainability, or oh, sorry, what sustainable qualities are there within the process of the 3D printing? And could you touch upon the materials that are being used to print the shoe? Sure. Um... To start maybe with the materials, it's a TPU, which is like a basically a flexible polymer that can be through heating will, will melt so that you can bring it into a new form. And as soon as it hardens by colden, more or less, um, you can always reheat it and bring it into another form. So this is like called mechanical recycling. Um, but that's not the only thing in the process. Um, it's also much about, for example, we don't pre-produce, but actually just produce what is needed. Um, mm. Also, obviously, what 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 parents said, like no glues um, that that usually are in, in in footwear, which also obviously make it very hard to recycle. Um, it's it's one material, um, so so that it's super easy to recycle. But also, like in the whole production process, there's no water involved. Um, you don't have to ship. It, it's, it's so great, you know, as soon as you have printers in every continent, you don't have to ship the shoes anymore. You can just ship the, ship the file and print it uh, where the printer is on that continent um, and yeah, make the trans transportation um, much less. So, so there are many, many, many parts being involved um, that make it much more sustainable solution. In our yeah. All right. 
and, and I and sorry and sorry just one thing yeah. I wanted to kind of point oh. into like why why are we doing all of this you know it's just going back to the, the the collaboration where I kicked off my journey is that I discovered that as a fashion designer that you know the textile and 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 you know apparel industries are the one of the top most wasteful industries polluting industries in the, in the world right and oil right I think there, I'm not sure how accurate this is but oil being number one and I remember at one point it was fashion and textile as like number two. Yeah. So as like a designer, I discovered that I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I was a part of that problem. And immediately I started thinking like, what could I do to be a part of the solution? And that really, again, kick, kind of kicked off, kicked off my journey. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's the whole reason, you know, we're doing this. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that's so amazing that you guys, you know, here we are actually... Con connected, you know, us from Copenhagen, New York, Heron, Cornelius, you're in Hamburg, and Daniel, you're normally in London. Right now, you're in Italy. You know, this is giving up us opportunities that we normally wouldn't have. Um, there's a lot of really great questions coming in, so I'm trying to get some of the the really good ones uh, on board. So, um, how is the how how they how are how are they to wear, Heron? Are they good wearing? We've seen you run around with them in the designer challenge. I wore them. I wore them for for like I don't know, like eight hours straight. And honestly, it felt like I was wearing a normal shoe. There was really no stiffness or rigidness. There was total flexibility. Um, but what's interesting is that with this process of of you know producing uh, printing a three D shoe. Cornelius, we haven't touched on it yet, but he, the beginning of that process is to scan your foot first and, and, and taking that data to inform the fit of your shoe. And I didn't do that because we can't travel right now. Um, so what I noticed is that there would maybe have been a little bit of a rubbing on like my pinky toe. Right, because <laughs> we, because because I didn't scan my foot, and that that's what's also very genius about about this process is that we're using data to inform the fit and the shape of your shoe because I learned through Cornelius is that our shoes really don't fit us. Um, that's why we have shoelaces, right? Because like our shoes don't fit us. So we have to tie it tighter around our feet so it can give yeah. us and fit us like a glove. You know, that comes from, you know, just getting lazy over time and trying to compromise and, and do things and cut corners. Um, but Cornelius is kind of, you know, and but we did, we used to make shoes to kind of fit us exactly to how our feet were shaped because you'll notice that our feet kind of have a length and a width. Mm. Well, we'll most, of, most of us on this, on this chat will probably match up to a length, right? But everyone's got different widths of feet. And so that's why you might slip your foot into a shoe and it might feel really, really tight. And you have to like, oh, don't worry. It's going to get looser over time. Just wear it in, wear it in, right? It just, it's going to get looser. Like, no, we don't want to, because then you get blisters and stuff. You have to fight, <laughs> right? But so with Cornelius and his, his monolith machine and the whole process, we're now designing shoes to fit exactly according to your specifications of your DNA, um, which is also a really huge breakthrough. Yeah, that's an amazing thing to do. Will that also, you know, 3D printers is also, or with the 3D printer, is that something that really help, you know, creating high performance shoes for athletes, for for instance, Cornelius? Yes, 100%. Um, what, what Better I, than normal shoes being um, traditionally manufactured. And what I also love is like by, by taking different densities, um, you can make different part of the sole or of the upper harder and softer. So it's not only the fit, but actually, I don't know if you're uh, a soccer player or a tennis player, you can actually adjust the shoes, not only on your, on your fit or on, your, on the shape of your foot, but also on the strategy that you want to play. Um, so so there, are, there are many things that haven't been touched uh, on, um, but it's, it's, it's super exciting. I, I believe it will be, it, it will make performance there also much better. All right, we, we are coming to an end. We still have five minutes left, but so if you are planning or are you planning to make this fully on demand, how will you plan for manufacturers for that? Will there be printers in many locations or what is the next step for you guys? Mm -hmm. um, so right now we, we want to build more machines 
of those mm -hmm. that you can see behind yeah, me. Yeah, there's the one behind you. Yes, they and are running. running right now, right? All of them are running. Um, yeah. so, so we need more of those to, to also just test more and get more used to production, uh, production setting. And then it would be our goal, yes, to build print farms in a sense of, let's say, so we are building right now a printer that we can build 300 to 500 times, so many, many couple of hundred times. Wow. Um, so, so that we can actually build a farm near a, near a central hub where we, where we can sell, for example, New York, LA, um, something like this, um, so that we can satisfy the, the demand of this area first. Um, so, so those are the next steps. Amazing. Will this collaboration come out? You know, will people be able to actually buy this shoe? That's something for her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the vision was to have an experience. Um, we want to have an experience in New York City where people can come and scan their feet and then print their shoes on the spot and limit that to like 100 sneakers and just kind of have a very kind of intimate moment for people for this new technology, um, just to kind of introduce this to the world. And then from there, we'll see where that kind of takes us. But I really want to have something in New York very soon um, where people can kind of walk through this experience and, and really, um, you know, see this firsthand, how special, how special this technology is and just to fill the shoes. I remember when I first heard about it before, before slipping my feet into a, into a 3D printed shoe and touching it, I was just like, man, like I really wanted to touch it myself. So I really want to kind of share that experience with the world as well and kind of invite people into a space. Um, so hopefully, you know, given the circumstances, it's proven to be a really, very, very challenging yeah. from, tra from travel to, you know, inviting people into public spaces and, we're, we're going to figure that out, but you know, this is just a very, yeah. this is actually, the, this is actually the very kind of start of, of everything to come. Um, so man, I'm psyched that we could finally present this to the world and obviously, you know, meet Cornelius and Daniel as well as very, very important partners in this journey. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to kind of invite people into this as well. No, I, I, I agree. It's, a. Uh... It's so weird to have been talking so much about this shoe and, and not being able to feel it in real life. But but speaking about the shoe, I actually want to show all of you guys listening in the shoe we are talking about. So you should all be able to see my screen now. This is the 3D printed shoe. Personally, I think it's it's awesome. It's the bomb. You know, you can uh, and in this site, which is the digital design studio. You can read all about it, see the inspiration behind, read about both Daniel and Cornelius and also Heron, obviously. And down here, you'll be able to see the designer challenge uh, video segment that um, we talked about earlier. Yeah. But, yeah. but to, to, uh, to end the session, I really want to hear, you know, from Daniel as well, what are the key learnings? You know, you were the, the drawing mastermind behind the sketches, what was the, the learnings from your side in this project? I think it's just, you know, when you have something like this and you know, the world is kind of your oyster, you, there's just so many options to like choose from. And, you know, I, I just think it's, um, I don't know, the, the learnings are just, uh, just, I don't know, challenge like continually to just see how far we can push this process. Um, to see how, 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 how we can scale it and just take it to a whole other level. But it's just amazing just to see what you know, has already been, or the progress that's been made already, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And also like never stop dreaming, right? Like this started because, because Daniel was literally just dreaming up Sunday sketches, right? Like that's how this all started was from a dream, yeah. right? And Cornelius, man, I want to print that dream. And like me being like, whoa, this is all possible. Like, <laughs> I want to get involved. Like, this is amazing. Um, so like never stop dreaming. Honestly, like this is how it all started. Like we took Sunday sketches. We kind of combined heron bird feet, looking at nature. And, and <laughs> Cornelius was like, I got a machine that can print that overnight. Like, let's do it. <laughs> so man, never stop dreaming, guys. That's how and this all started. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, time's up.
And I think that's uh, the perfect ending to, to this session. Thank you so much, guys, for, for tuning in, both all of you, everyone out there, and also Heron, Daniel, and Cornelius. It's a pleasure. Let's uh, continue this journey. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.